Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to your feet. We're going to talk about your ballroom backward walks tonight and why it is so So important. What's up, everybody? It's Vaughn here from Ballroom Mastery. Lovely to have you here. If you have not checked out our YouTube channel, check out Ballroom Mastery. And I would like you to uh, like, subscribe, and check out the new routine videos and episodes going up in there. But I'd like to talk to you about something often neglected, very few master, the backward walk. Okay, so if this is the first time here, welcome. It's lovely to have you. Please leave a comment. Let me know any questions you may have as we go along. I like to bring uh, these impromptu, unrehearsed, random Facebook Lives uh, throughout each week, uh, accommodating your questions, what you have the biggest problems doing. And then of course, uh, I also make high quality videos to put on YouTube uh, if enough people need certain problems answered. So without any further waiting, let's dive on in and understand what's going on with our feet. So think about it like this. Uh, Let me ask you to begin with, how good are you with your footwork? So do you know what footwork actually is? Are you aware of how to use your feet properly to create beautiful movement? Because fundamentally, why do we have technique? So let's think about the higher idea here. So technique is important to have something called mechanics and mechanics create something important called, well, you know, only if you value dancing beautifully and on time and with the music, something called expression and musicality, right? The artistry, so to speak. And so if you don't have, I like to make this, this analogy often. It's like, how many ways are there to paint? So if you had a canvas, a paintbrush and paint, how many ways could you paint? And you'd say, well, you've only got what? The canvas, the paint and the paintbrush and then your imagination, right? Which is where the artistry lies. So with those three elements, how many paintings do you think you could make? You think about it, the entire color spectrum. So it's, the answer is infinite, but you had finite resources, right? You only had your paintbrush, your canvas, and your paints. Now, what is the point? Well, when it comes to ballroom dancing, we have the same thing. We have our feet, we have the music, right? And we have our technique. And of course, we have our partner. And there's inherently a lot more problems that can go wrong. But fundamentally, if we think about how many things we could paint with those only those elements, it is the technique of painting that allows you the freedom of expression. And, and so that is a big rabbit hole to go down, right? So it's like, how many ways are there to paint using a brush? You could, you could, you could, I don't even know how to paint, right? You could dot, you could point, you could slash, <laughs> slash. I don't even know what it means, right? You could brush. <laughs> oh, it's late. Don't judge me. And then, so is, the point is being what? When we look at the way that we create our dancing, we need technique so we can have freedom of expression. And so there's a lot of people that argue against technique for some weird reason. I don't understand it. It's so strange to me. It's like, because we were raised on the fundamental principles of ballroom dancing, mastering our feet. And it seems like only a small amount of people dive into that on a into a deep level and really focus on it a lot. It gets lost in translation. So, you know, I like to school the students the way that I was taught too. And, and something I'm still working on. It's something you always develop. It's not something you arrive at. So if you think you arrive at this, you don't. It's something that's ongoing. And like I said, how many ways can you paint? It's infinite. But you always have finite resources. So our feet, different ages age differently. They have different flexibility. They have different problems. Um, and, and everyone's bodies are unique. So when we look at technique, it's got to be flexible, right? So now, the part of the technique we need to focus on matters. So if you imagine like a pyramid, okay, that's a hierarchy. There's a hierarchy of technique needs, yeah? So if you want to get to the top, which is like expression and musicality, that that is that is built upon a foundation, yeah? And so if we look at foundation of being technique, there's another pyramid within in that, and there's a hierarchy, yeah? So you wouldn't really necessarily focus on, say, rise and fall as a pits of technique uh, in the beginning, as much as you would footwork, which is heels and toes, for example. So you would also focus on foot positions, left foot, right foot, promenade, CBMP. These are important foot positions to understand. How to use CBM with our footwork and our foot positions, for example. So these things matter before you can access other higher levels of technique, which would make sense. So for example, a beginner would fail to understand the importance of sway. And in fact, it would probably do them worse Right? So what do you think of this? I mean, it makes sense, right? So your sway in ballroom dancing, which is a counterbalance, makes no sense if you've only danced for like four months, right? Because you're going to have no frame of reference. Your technique isn't strong enough for that to even be used properly, okay? Because you're not doing the other things correctly. So one of the elements of technique that I can always talk about day in and day out to all levels of dancers, myself included, are the backward walks. So it's a long prelude to this, but the backward walk, I've got to stress how important it is. If you cannot walk backwards in ballroom dancing, you're not going to be very good. It's, it's just 
it's just how it is. It's like, I want to sway. I want to feel the music, right? You can do all that, no problem. But two of you dancing as one is not as much of a possibility without any tension, without total relaxation and freedom of expression. You can't access that without understanding how to do things like backward walks and forward walks properly. They are the basics, but really they do get lost a lot. So let me help you. I'm going to go to my feet in a minute. Awesome to watch, right? Like, who wants to watch boring dancing feet on a on a Friday night? You do, you strange, crazy dance nerds like me. And so, uh, we'll go to that in a second. And I just want you to have that in your head of why it's so important, why you should focus on it so much. Because when you have the ability to do it autonomously, like like a habit. Oh my God, you're going to love your dancing so much more. And that's what I want for all of you, okay? So let's look at our feet and think about the backward walk using specifically the toe, the ball, and of course the heel correctly. And I want you to, if if you've got a piece of paper, I want you to draw this out. So some of you might like the visual of this, but you can imagine you've got a dot here, there, and a dot there. I'll do it this way, dot, dot, and a line in between. And, And so imagine now you put those two dots there and then a dot up the top, so you've got a triangle, yep. So imagine that's a triangle of balance. The triangle point at the top, the apex, represents your center of gravity, and then the left-hand side here, or your right-hand side, is where you're starting, and that's where you're ending. And so you can imagine those two points is a step beginning and a step ending. And and let me exemplify this for you. All right, so I can't, I don't think I can turn, I don't think I can rotate that, so, all right, so you can see my feet. I hope you can hear this all right. Okay, so we've got our triangle, yeah? So if I stand side on, there's my center, there's my moving foot, and there's my free foot. Now, so there's my triangle of balance, so to speak, okay? Now, if I've got my triangle of balance, my back heel can stay off the floor, my front toe can stay off the floor, because my center is in the middle. And of course, through postural principles, which is a different part of technique, um, I should be able to maintain a reasonable balance. Now the problem with most ballroom dancers is I'm gonna come up nice and close here, is when they go backwards, have a look at my foot. I'm gonna show you, you tell me what's wrong with this. All right, I'm gonna go back, ready, and. Okay, can you see it? I'll do it this way again. So I'll pull my heel forward, all right? What am I doing wrong? Well, my foot's flat to begin with, okay? Let me show you another thing that can be wrong, right? What am I doing now? Lifting the foot off the floor, so that's incorrect. So we always maintain contact with the floor. Now this is a long lesson we could go into a lot of depth on, but I'm gonna make it fairly short and simple in a second. So there's the flat foot, right? Now when you go backwards, the first part to go backwards is actually the toe. So now my knee shouldn't pop up, but I do want the toe to go backwards, right? And then I wanna reach back on the tip of the toe. Can you see this? So what the point of this is, is that the majority of people that I'm working with who say, let's say intermediate level, and really wanna become advanced dancers, what happens is they're going back all the time on the ball of the foot, like that, okay? Now, then, worse than that, is they end up stopping the movement about there, and then so effectively it just becomes a step. Now, <clears throat> are you looking? Okay, stepping is not dancing, ha <laughs> ha! Stepping is not dancing. Let me show you something. Look at this, look, watch this. That ain't dancing, y'all, right? Better what's up, right? That is not, that's not what we're talking about with ballroom dancing. So what do we have to do? We have to create a gliding action through the floor. And so part of the the, the challenge for all of us, yeah, what we have to master is sending this foot off from a heel to a flat foot. And you can see if I if I pass my foot at a certain point, my feet come together perfectly, right? And they're perfectly flat. And then I send it off on the first ball, then toe, then the toe again. Right, so this is really what you're gonna focus on today. I want you to go back on the tip of your toe and notice that now I can extend that back as far as possible by softening this front knee, but that's a different problem for later to talk about. And then when I go to transfer my weight, I go to the ball of the back foot and I release the front toe. Do you see that? So in the middle of my step, I'm balanced between my two feet. And then I, in flight with actual motion, I would be pulling that heel And the challenge with this is, I know the angle might be a bit strange, but the challenge with this is I need to make sure that I can pull the heel and then lower my supporting foot at the same time. So if I explain this in something that doesn't sound like French, right? My toe's out there. I need to make sure this back heel lowers. See how it's lowering? It lowers at the same moment that that passes. That is called precision dancing, right? If you go from a toe, boom, and lower at the time that closes, your movement will be out of 
sight. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me. It'll be amazing. I mean, again, smash that like button if you want amazing dancing and beautiful dancing. I hope you do, because I do too. All right, so now we exemplify that again, right? So what's happening? You send the toe off, right, into the sunset. By the time it reaches its destination, you'll be going to the ball of your foot. And then as that happens, you pull that heel lower at the same time. And then you repeat the madness again, toe first. What ends up happening is your movement becomes so balanced as you do this. And you have to remember we're ballroom dancing. So that means there's someone attached. So remember that triangle? Okay, that triangle, you need that person to stay with you. What an idea. Your partner dancing with you. Amazing, right? So for them to stay with you, you have to maintain a contact. And so if you can put your hands like that little circle, right? That is on your right side as the man and lady. It's called the common center, okay? The common center is common amongst all dancers, no matter shape or size or who you are. There's different ways to approach the center of town, okay? But the center of town is the center of town. In dancing, that center is always close touching clothes, always. So if you can't walk backwards, and if I had someone here, I could demonstrate this better. But if I went backwards and dropped my heel, so I'm gonna ex ex tell you again what to do with backward walk. If I just drop that heel like that, what I've told this person in front, boom, is I've stopped the movement. They're gonna hit me, boom, and then we're gonna be bouncing out again. So if you ever bash each other's legs, or if you feel that stopping, starting, or bumping into each other, particularly in Foxtrot, your backward walks need to be looked at, okay? That's, and there's obviously problems with this, but the backward walks are part of the biggest issue because we practice going forward so much, okay? So, let's just address this again. What you're gonna feel now, or what you're gonna aim for, pull the heel, flat foot, all right? Tip of the toe. See how I'm sending it off first before I move? So in slow-mo, I would be wanting to create that action so I can then pull the heel, yeah? And then same thing again. Toe, this is probably hard to see there. Warm, so circle, pull warm, right? So toe back. And I need to feel, I need to feel that I can pull that heel. And I'm trying to lower, shuple, as that foot passes. And that way I can end up creating, hopefully, a uh, nicer movement. See if I can even come to you. Right, so, So my feet can create a glide. All right, so I guess the bottom line is, without going, I can't zoom in or do any fancy editing, but the bottom line is this, you wanna be able to have your feet lower so your center of gravity can always be in a constant state of motion. And you gotta think of it like a swing set, yeah? So when you're on a swing set, you start still, well, once you get a bit of momentum or acceleration, you accelerate and you decelerate. So you speed up and slow down like gears in a car, right? So in ballroom dancing particularly, you're aiming to, except for tango, right, which you treat as a separate dance, you are trying to create this thing called fall. And this falling action creates speed, you accelerate, and then you slow down, and you accelerate and you slow down, and you accelerate and slow down. What do you think is the basis of that, right? The basis of the control of that. The fundamental technique that if you don't get right, your dancing gets completely shot. It's your feet, right? It's the footwork, heels and toes. It's, it's the way you roll through your heel and toe though. So it's too much to mention going heel, ball, toe, but you should assume as a dancer, you can feel a roll when you, when you go forward and you feel a roll when you go backward. You better believe that that is musicality, right? The ability to go one in waltz, not one and like smack the floor up or to go back on one and roll toe ball heel, right? And roll through it. Meanwhile, the center is coming to collect with that at the same time. And that's what creates that beautiful smooth movement you always see in, in the waltz or the foxtrot. And I'm gonna say this for those who, who haven't tried this before. The, it is hard. <laughs> it's so hard, right? Like, I just wanna to learn to dance. So if you're a beginner dancer, you're gonna focus on patterns, you're gonna focus on steps, you're gonna focus on just getting the timing. That's cool, so information overload, almost what I'm saying. But if you wanna be good, and you wanna really wanna take your dancing to the next level, you have to work on backward walks, okay? You, you might get bored doing it, you've got to do it. I make my beginner dancers, they, that is part of their warm up. It's walking back and forth as a couple and they all suck at doing it because we all do when we start. But if they can get past it, my God, the possibilities are amazing. And just to pre-frame this one more, uh, to, to give you a bit more insight, one of the coaches that I, oh, thank you, Tonya. Uh, one, of the, one of the insights that I had from uh, the coaches we worked with who were the top, the legends in dancing who created this beautiful art of ours, 
It's so nerve wracking having lessons with these guys, people, right? Because they're so good. And they would always stress the importance of walking. And in fact, they were told, if you can't walk together, you can't dance together. So with that in mind, I want you to think about this this week. I want you to really focus on your footwork, right? Like how, but not just heels and toes, like how you're rolling through the feet. Notice how difficult it is. One last thing that, that you're gonna understand why this is so hard. You can't do this just stationary. You have to let your body swing. Right, so you need to feel that your body weight is like a swing, that you're feeling your body weight going up on a swing and then swinging back, that backward feeling. Do you remember being a kid going into a playground? Just go and do this tomorrow if you can go to a playground. Go on a swing, be a kid again for a bit, it's so much fun. And then notice the backward feeling you have. That is actually what it feels like when you do good foxtrot, for example. When you go backwards, it has that beautiful flow and that swing to it, it doesn't have a drop. Um, and so it, it's that lovely ebb and flow and it's so difficult, but if you can't control your feet, you'll never access that. But I don't care about your age, I don't care about your uh, inability, right? How long you've been dancing, this is something that all people can access if they just put the work in, okay? And I know because I teach some people who you'd look at and go, no way are they gonna get this. And with perseverance, like we all do, we improve, okay? So just remember to, to pull the heel beautifully. And I really appreciate you all being here. And thank you, and thank you, Avril. Michelle, hello! Lovely to have you here. Appreciate all your comments. You guys are amazing. I, this is why I do it for y'all. I do it for us. It helps me to become better too. And uh, whatever you need help with, you leave a comment below. You let me know. You share it and tag it in a friend. And you know what you could do? You could sideways, like, wink at your partner and be like, you know, I've been trying to tell you this, but I'm not not going to anymore. I'm just going to tag you in these videos and be like, you better do this next lesson, Frederick. <laughs> Anyways, I uh, appreciate you being here. I'm sorry. I hope the quality, I know it's a bit rough, but I really appreciate you seeing this um, and, and, see, and, and noticing it. Uh, on the YouTube channel, I'm going to be creating way more like high quality, like 4K, like this is how you use your feet videos. And they help me to get better too. So thank you. You guys rock. And again, leave me a comment below. Do you need help with rumba? Do you want to do this in Latin? I can do the same thing in the in how to do it. My specialty is 10 dance is what we rock out with. It's what we were professionals in. It's so fucking hard to my French to do both styles. Why would you do that to yourself? But for a teaching perspective, it's perfect, right? Anyways, you guys are awesome. Thank you. Have a wonderful night. I'm going to go say uh, hello to my, my darling wife. Thank you all.